I want to hit one specific data point with you. Restaurant spending up 17%. Mm -hmm. Should we take that as the consumer is just willing to continue to spend on experiences? Or were there some things in this month, like Mother's Day and graduation, that may be skewing those numbers higher? I mean, look, there's always things when it comes to high frequency data. So we always have to take that into consideration. But if you look past even just this month, the trend since the beginning of the year, since even last year, has been this prioritization of experiences. And it has not let up. So we see that in this double digit growth in restaurant spending, in lodging, in air travel, and all kinds of travel. Um, so that definitely still seems to be an area where consumers are looking to prioritize their dollars. That's where their pent up demand still rests. Um, and it's gonna be fascinating to see how that plays out throughout this summer travel and vacation season as well. So we're anxiously awaiting that data. Yeah, one other thing I want to talk to you about is e-commerce. So we continue to see relatively strong e-commerce growth in these reports. Last month yeah. it was 13%. It's been pretty close to about 10% or just over every one of these months. How should we interpret this willingness of consumers to continue to spend online even with the stores back open? Well, I think they're doing both. Um, so we've seen some choppiness when it comes to the growth in e-commerce um, and in the growth in, in, in store as well, but particularly e-commerce. Um, and as you noted, this month there were a number of special factors, including Mother's Day. So if you look at things like jewelry and online spending for some of those categories, they were notably um, strong. Um, but I think consumers are looking for a variety of different channels, right? So you are seeing e-commerce continue to look very strong coming out of the pandemic for a lot of categories, kind of accelerating the move towards online that we had seen prior to the pandemic. Other categories, like for example, if you look at some retail stores, in-store has really come back in a meaningful way. So I think it varies by category and it shows how consumers are just continuing to evolve coming out of this pandemic, their behavior, their preferences, and it's not over yet. I know what else continues to evolve? People's perception of what the Fed's going to do. So we have yeah. CPI coming up. When we look at CPI, um, what do you expect? And do you expect to see a, a, a marked uh, decline in inflation? Do you expect to see it still remain sticky in food and housing, as we just mentioned in the intro to you? So I'm going to pick all of the above because it very much depends on the category. So for something like goods inflation, I think last month was more of a fluke. So on a month-to-month -month basis, we're likely to see a reversal there. And the trend for goods inflation should generally be softer, given the dynamics that we're seeing in the market. Um, but for some of these other categories, like shelter or core services or the super core that um, is being talked about, there it has been sticky um, and higher. And we will be until you see that significant shift in the labor market, which clearly we have not seen yet when you look at the recent um, jobs numbers. So it depends on the category. Um, you're also seeing certainly some relief in terms of food prices now. I suspect that will continue. Energy prices are coming down. Um, and that should allow the headline and the core to continue to moderate. So headline CPI around 4%. It's not a target, um, but it's made significant progress from last summer where we were hovering close to 9% inflation. So when you think about what that does for the Federal Reserve, there's progress, but not necessarily enough. And that's what they're going to reinforce, I think, when they speak this week. All right. So I'm going to push you forward here. What are you expecting okay. when it comes to this meeting? Pause, hawkish pause, increase. And then also, how does that impact the consumer? If we see another rate hike, we've talked about how stretched thin the consumers become using credit more and more. How do you see that impacting consumer spending? Well, I think the latest buzz is skip, right, for the Fed. <laughs> um, and I think that's been, you know, very consistent with their communication, which is that, you know, they want to take a moment. They want to take um, time to assess what's happened of late, particularly when it comes to the flow of credit and the cost of capital. Um, and that's, I think, what we're going to hear from Fed Chair Powell is that they are looking at all sources of data, whether that's their primary data sources or on the labor market inflation and other measures, right? Looking at surveys, looking at uh, this flow of, of credit, access to capital, um, how much interest rates are actually transmitting into the economy, and that they're going to be flexible, right? Um, which means that they can hike again if they think that they're not making enough progress towards their dual mandate. So I think in this meeting, they're very much going to be leaving their options open along with this skip.